Hey, thanks for joining us, everybody. It is March 17th. It is St. Patrick's Day, 2009. My name is Michael Collins, and uh, this looks like a warehouse, but it's really a little more. This is a area in the Product Development Center at Ford Motor Company's uh, huge complex in Dearborn, Michigan. And we're talking about seat comfort today. We're going to show you how they measure, scientifically check out how comfortable any car seat is. They call it the Seat Comfort Lab. Here's some of the people we're working with today. There's Rich and Hallie. Say hi, everybody. Hello, Howdy. everybody. Okay. The questions they ask and the answers they look for might fit on this comfort scale here. Look at this. Something I never thought about. They check, you know, how comfortable you are in a chair. And how do you tell? 15, the greatest imaginable comfort ever. Number one, the greatest imaginable discomfort ever, ever. Number eight, neither comfortable nor uncomfortable. Which, you know, brings up the fact that uh, just because a vehicle's um, seat isn't discomfortable doesn't mean it's comfortable. We'll talk about the fact that uh, this is the seat comfort lab inside uh, the Product Development Center where they're developing the cars for the next generation, for the next two, three, five years. Here's a couple of guys who have been working on seating and uh, the comfort scale and comfort DNA for Ford Motor Vehicles. This is Mike Kosich and this is Larry Kumar. Thanks for a coach. Co I'm sorry, Mike. What uh, is Ford comfort DNA? It's a unique, decidedly Ford perspective on how we want to deliver seat comfort. Okay, what does that mean? There's a couple specific um, attributes or sub-attributes that I'd highlight maybe on this seat. This is our, our focus, our current focus. So the things about our seats that you would notice, a couple things speci specifically. The lower seat back is a little tighter than maybe some of our competitor seat, and that was consciously done to hold the pelvis in place. And then as you move up the seat back, what you'll notice about our seats is that um, they're not overly restrictive. They allow for some movement of the upper shoulder so you can reach to different things in the interior. And then on the cushion, a couple of unique characteristics. Again, it's, it's with respect to how the seat supports you. There's very little bolster in the back part of the cushion and a, lot, a little bit of bolster in the front of the cushion and that's to relieve pressure around the back of your um, lower pelvis and then at the front of the thigh, it's to enable or to not to limit leg splay and to allow comfortable operation of the pedals. And then from a softness perspective, there's also a unique place where we've positioned our Ford Blue Oval. Those are the kind of tenants of seat comfort DNA. How uh, soft or how hard the seat is, that's a tough one, isn't it? Everybody has their own definition. Hence the uh, big market in uh, mattresses uh, with the numbers settings. It's, it's totally true. The, the way I like to describe it, um, if you consider all the seats, all the cars on the market, there's a broad spectrum of hardness, all the way from super soft to super firm. And there's a, a range in there that's, that's comfortable. And within that comfortable range, we've sp picked a specific location that to characterize our DNA. So it's, it's a, a smaller subset. It's a, a unique, decidedly forward position for hardness. So no matter what the vehicle is, no matter where it is in the world, Larry Kumar, you... Uh you want people to be able to sit in a seat and say, ah, that's a Ford vehicle? Is that where we're going? That's right. That's uh, just like our DNA, right, makes up uh, as part of what makes us who we are, right? Uh, same thing on Ford products. We want uh, customers to recognize Ford products for the way, by the way they sound, by the way they feel, like the seat, by the way they accelerate, by the way they steer. And so we have a very broad uh, DNA effort, and seat comfort's one of those elements. I should add that uh, Mike does a ton of research on these seats. So you said you talked about the different preferences that customers have. Uh, we'll, we'll have clinics where we have customers either just sit in the seats or they'll drive the cars and uh, give us comments and feedback about the seats. And uh, our DNA, we've proven over and over again, does great on that type of uh, customer research. Let's uh, show them, Mike, some of the testing that you do or give them an idea of what some of the testing is like. This is a carousel, right? Um, so what I want to highlight, though, is we've gone to great lengths to quantify comfort and objectify the science. But at, in the end, at the end of the day, it's still a subjective construct. So this is one of the instruments we use to, to gauge or confirm in the end that we've delivered the, the DNA we set out to deliver. Now so this how this thing works. Let me, let me get on. Let me, right. this, is a, uh, this is a carousel. 
I'll stand here, and you guys will move. So if, if Mike were a subject, a test subject, or a participant in this clinic, he would stand just like he is, and then we would ask him to sit in the seat and sit in there for a minute or two and rate some attribute of the seat, so call it firmness. So he would think about firmness for a minute or two as he sat in that seat. I would sit down and either go, ah, or oh, right? And then I'd get up, and, uh, and you use that. Then there's a little one button. To one to 15? Well, we could use that one to 15 scale that, that Mike highlighted earlier, or we could just ask him to hold that thought in his mind, and then I would present to him in a random order the next seat, and then ask him to sit in that seat, and then he would, we would ask him which seat is harder, which seat is softer, you know, on, on some scale. And that would give us a feel for uh, what, what the human sensitivity is to seat hardness. And then from that, we set some bounds. And then within that, we set some targets for our Ford-specific DNA. This is, part of the, this is the instrument we use to, to set our DNA. Now, this program is really going worldwide. It's going global. That's got to be tough. You know, when you think of uh, North America, you think, think of uh, South America, you think of Asia, Europe. We're all different people, different sized people. Yeah, and that's uh, been a big part of the effort for about the last year and a half as we've taken the individual elements of DNA that we had in each of the regions and in each of the countries and we've kind of brought them together. In the case of seat comfort, as you know, the people in the U.S. are a little larger than in other countries. And so one of the things about the DNA is the contoured back that's uh, uh, concave, it's curved. And so therefore, a smaller occupant uh, feels just as comfortable as a larger occupant. Uh, but we see other differences as well. There's uh, different expectations for, if you could imagine, even uh, dust on your wheels from brake dust, right? So we are learning all those and we understand all those regional uh, differences. Now it's trying to find the optimum solution. And like I said before, we do a ton of research to go validate, hey, what, what do we want to do on the next generation focus that's going to be a global vehicle, right? How do we go about doing that vehicle? And how do you make a seat comfortable on a small vehicle and just as comfortable on a large vehicle. Again, th there's two keys. One is the seat shape and concavity is one of the things Larry highlighted. Let's point that out again and that's this area is smaller. So if you look, this is a fusion. This is again, our right? fusion, today's fusion, and what you'll note about our seat is it has a little bit of a, call it a dish in it this way. Whereas some of our competitors are either flat or even dished the other way, convex. So this is what's key to supporting as broad a range of occupants as possible. Okay, we're taking uh, calls, uh, not calls, we're taking uh, chat, actually, uh, on uh, Ustream. Yali, what have you got here? What fabrics are you currently using for the seats? Do they contain any recycled material? Yeah, good question. Yeah, green is one of the pillars at, at Ford here. So we, we do have some seats that uh, leverage uh, biosustainable materials. That's, that's a great question, and we do do that. And probably evolving into it more and more. And more and more is, th is the intent. And e uh, even apart from fabrics, we're talking about um, foams, using soy foams. You've probably seen some of the stuff in the press on soy foams. So that's a big push for us. Who comes up with the seat first? How does it work? Design sends uh, a seat over and said, S make this comfortable? Or do you work on the design? Who? So how did we have, we've got design studios here that are instrumental in making the seat look aesthetically pleasing. So what we do is we work hand-in-hand hand with them to deliver some of the things that are DNA. So clearly we want our seats to be stylish. Clearly we want uh, design to separate us also, but we can't do that at the expense of comfort. So we work hand-in-hand hand with our design studios and more and more every day so that we get all these things we just described from a contour perspective baked into the surfaces that our design studios are delivering. And this is the uh, seat of a competitor. And your people or your team has determined that this is too hard for the Ford DNA. 